so Nuncats is doing three things that's interesting. Uh, they're um, building planes. That's pretty interesting. Electric ones at that. They're also giving planes away for every so many they build. They give one away to a community in need uh, in the outback, in the uh, Sahara, in the um, African wilderness. Who knows? And the third thing they're doing is teaching kids how to actually build planes. It's all pretty interesting, but I got to keep it short because there's music in the background and it happens. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. So we're here up fully charged with Tim from Nuncats, electric aviation for the common good. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell us about hashtag electric sky jeeps. Um, right. The, the aircraft in North America, they're a really popular kit plane. Everyone flies them off airport, short takeoff from landing stuff. Yeah. So they call it a sky jeep. And we have literally stuck electric on the front of it. Hence the hashtag electric sky jeeps. Yeah. And it is really it's just... A, we on there. 650 kilo install machine with the simplest electric car plant we could devise. So low maintenance, low car count, get you in the air with nothing but free range organic electrons as long as you've got some solar to charge it off. And as lightweight as possible. Yeah, absolutely. So the aircraft is a off the shelf kit, so to speak. A well-tested, well-known kind of thing. Yeah, it's a, uh, we crowded it up with Zenith, they're the market leader, they sell hundred of these a year I believe at the minute so uh, it's the most popular kit plane in the US and in Port Puerto Rico Martin point of view they're really easy to kill and then and well, the zeniths that get sold get finished and get flown so yeah they've got a real good record uh, this is part of one of our stem projects and this was built by visitors to the women's world binding championship last year wow so this this was all you know just kids come and have a go I give them a five minute lesson on how riveting works and they they pull rivets Five thousand rivets in total on the plane. Yeah, yeah, five, five thousand eight hundred, maybe something yeah. like that. Not Who's many. Counting? <laughs> Not many. I'd have to is, check with the factory. Is the yeah, important? There's, there's a few rivets. Yeah, there's a few, but they go quick when you've got enough hands. Absolutely, and we use um, just the vast majority of the rivets on this aircraft are, are blind, so you do just use a electric rivet gun. So I, if you can squeeze the trigger, you can pull these rivets. So what is the purpose of the plane? The primary purpose is to give medical practitioners in the developing world an option where they can't get fuel and the roads are no good. Which isn't everywhere. A lot no. of places you can buy Avgas. But where you can't, this kind of stuff can save a life. Just in the prototype, flight time of 40 minutes maybe on full charge, something like that which doesn't sound a lot, but we're talking about parts of the world where 18 kilometers can take days. And in situations like that, a cheap, robust bush plane is the tool you need. Yeah. So that's ultimately what it's aimed at. But in order to allow us to actually do that, we're also doing kits for sport flyers who, you know, want to go flying at the weekends, but don't want to have to find 100 low lead or don't want to burn leaded fuel yeah, sure. so it's an option for people who are happy with the limited endurance, but it's a tool for people who really need it. How much does the motor weigh? The motor itself, 20 kilos. So very, very small. And the battery, how much, How? Uh, what's, what's all, the story there? All the weight there? is in the batteries. Um, in aeroplane terms, uh, the basic one is 30 kilowatt hours, and that's 150 kilos of batteries, give or take. Sure. Um, if we convert it to single seat operation, which is what a lot of the paramedics and midwives want, we're working on a, a 16 kilowatt hour range extender, so then we'd be up at 46 kilowatt hours. Yeah. There's a little bit of work to do on that. We should be testing that early next year. So this is a medical kit? Uh, yeah, that, that's my crash kit, which is the amount of what we will offer as a factory option to people who need to get that anywhere in a hurry. Because that's essentially catastrophic lead, airway, breathing, some oxygen, uh, cell ox, tourniquets, that kind of thing. So in these cases, especially in, in places like Brazil, um, they need to get somewhere fast to stabilize a patient. Once you've stabilized the patient, the overland ambulance might take four hours, but it will arrive. That's the kind of use case for these. So 40 minutes flying time, say 15 to 18 minutes each way to be safe. Mm -hmm. Round trips, how far is that? 
um, it does kind of depend on the wind. Sure. Um, we a lot of the feasibility studies on there. We're assuming 23 miles over the ground is a, a functional minimum that we know we can hit. Because with the prototype at the moment, we're not working the batteries really hard. We know there's more capacity to have. We're just not abusing them at this point. Right. So we're doing feasibility studies based on 23 miles over the ground. We know we can beat that. And actually all the cases we've looked at, that works. So we've got the whole of the Gambia. We'd need five bases of operation. And that's rapid access to 2.6 million people. Wow. Um, El Salvador, there's seven airfields we've identified that our, our man out there has said would be usable and we can cover the whole country. Uh, that's north, so it was, uh, northwest Kenya, where those are all existing solar microgrids on schools and clinics. The solar's out there, we can just hop between them and we don't even need 20 mile range for that, but you can do in a day what Fire Hilux might take two days, three days, you don't know, depending on you know, when it's rained or what state roads in. The Congo River is an interesting case because you can fit it with floats. And on a river system, oh. you can put charge barges wherever you need them. You've only got to put them down once, put a pin in the flat, if you put a pin in the map, and you can always put down there and charge up. There's a lot of riverside communities on the Congo that are basically served by canoe. And, and now tell me about the student programs. Uh, yep, yeah, there's a, a shortage of trained engineers in the world and uh, students love being given real things to work on. So we're now working with the CAA skills team uh, to deliver experience programs for students all the way from uh, school through to undergraduate to give them the chance to, A, help us build real aircraft parts for, for the users who need them, but also teach them the basic skills that they often don't get to see at school these days. They really don't. Yeah. My kids in the school had no shop mandatory for performers. They'd be surprised that, I mean, we've got second year aeronautical engineering students about to graduate who come to us to see if they can help because they've never actually pulled a rivet. They know the maths, they know how to do the stress analysis and they know the theory, they've got no feel for it. And I take it to be a very good sign that they know that's a problem but there aren't that many opportunities for them to come and you know, eventually fill the metal, fill the rivets, and practice the skills. Oh, uh, these are on the vertical stabiliser. That was the pilot program. So that was for the supervisors and students off the pilot program. So mostly students. Um, there's a, an Apache tech from the army who had the knuckles out, and then the submariner. Also, and this is, these are all the kids who've helped us at pop-up STEM events like this. So, you know, they've, they've pulled a river or they've done something for us on, on another part. Ah. Okay. Are there any things I forgot to ask? How can people help? Uh, we are very open to options at the minute. We think we can, we've got capacity to build about eight kits by the end of next year. If we could sell six of those to sport flyers, that one would be at a health centre in the developing world by the end of next year, where every 20 minute life, every 20 minute flight was potentially saving, you know, it's life saving work. So, you know, anyone who actually is happy with limited endurance, but wants to build a cheap electric plane because it's a cool thing to have, because it is a cool thing to have, um, you know, we're, we're taking deposits on the kits now. Uh, they're a little more expensive than we'd like right now, but, you know. Uh, How much are they? Uh, if you, if you include the airframe, so complete nut and bolt, sure. um, we're taking deposits on the basis of 85,000, but I'm pretty sure we can actually cut a little bit out of that by the time we do final stage payments in six months time. Um, other than that, we're always keen for more use cases. So people, we, just this morning, we had an eye doctor who works in Kenya complaining about a Hilux. She was in the camp of how soon can I have one because we'd use it. So you know, any use cases like that, where that limited endurance might be useful. And again, from schools, colleges, universities, anyone who wants those opportunities, unless we know where they are and who wants to do it, we haven't got a complete list. Very cool. And obviously as a social enterprise, there's always sponsorship opportunities. Loads of room left on the plane to stick us. <laughs> um, so yeah, but we're, we're flexible and we'll, uh, we'll talk to anyone who thinks it's interesting. All right. Now, Tim, I do want to thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Okay, so what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? What should I have asked him? What would you like to ask him? Ask in the comments below, because 
Who knows? I read them. Maybe other people do too. Uh, stay tuned, stay juicy, all that good stuff. Big thanks to my patrons who get early access, bonus content. And as a reminder, I will be in Michigan for not one, but two and a half events in June. Uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting. There's a meet and greet for me. That's weird. And uh, the big event in Muskegon. Sorry, Muskegon. That's what it's officially called. And then, uh, of course, uh, the top secret event uh, on Sunday. So let's see what happens with that. And uh, there'll be more events. You'll see. You'll see. He, he's going to be over there pulling funny faces. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's a shame we don't have a second camera to capture all the... All, yeah. all the background stuff. Yeah.